welcome to the old corral. You know, we're always glad to have you, and from the happy looks on the faces of these kids here, we're in for a lively session at our get-together. So if you can find a comfortable seat up there on the old top rail, let's all relax for a spell and join in on the song fair. Warm and Ozy Waters here promised some good singing, and I see that Sally Foster is here again to put her smiling voice to work, too. Now, maybe we can uh, entice her to kind of start us out. What do you say, Sally? All right, Kathy. What would you like to hear? Well, I'd like to hear I'll Never Let You Go, Little Dark. I've How got about... it right here. Ready, Let's have it, boys. <laughs> Let's have that one. Let's have that one. And your drink is cold, it's saddle along the clothesline. Take that tin pan, set them from your head. Tie your faithful little pony to the hall tree. Broomstick buckaroo, it's time for bed. Say that pan man foreman's on the range now. And he's brought you that sleepy head. Tie your kite string lasso to the bedpost. Broomstick buckaroo, it's time for bed. All the outlaws and Indians are hiding. Thousands fell on the living room floor. So pick up your battle in the morning and bite the dust. When your wooden six gun roars, then snuggle down by your make believe campfire with your wallpaper sky overhead. Dream of three long years in the saddle, skedaddle, broomstick buckaroo, it's time for bed. Daddy's riding herd on cardboard cattle. You're the last little doggie in the hay. And Mama's in the cook shack planning breakfast. What a wonderful game you've had today. Then snuggle down by your make-believe campfire with your wallpaper sky overhead. Dream of three long years in the saddle. Skedaddle, broomstick, buckaroo, it's time for bed. Thank you. 
Somebody got hurt in that melee. Well, here's the fellow that has charge of a chuck wagon. Slim, suppose you sing a song and using the words that you say to us fellas every morning when we come in. You don't mean good morning. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. I'm so happy every day the sun don't fail. Happy as the meadow lark swinging down the trail. Happy through the day until the sun has gone. I'll be happy through the night for he'll be back at dawn. Every day the prairie sun comes over the hill. Smiling in the sky he says good morning. From his nest the sleepy bird is stretching his wings. Waking to the world that he was born in. Prairie flowers are nodding in the sparkling dew. Mother Nature doesn't have to warn him to cling to the earth that finds him. And every day we'll find him waiting for the sun to say good morning. Why should I be moaning when the sun rides high? He's the one who showed me why clouds are rolling by. Every day we'll find me shouting from now on. Howdy, Mr. Sun, and how are you getting on? Every day the prairie sun comes over the hill. Smiling in the sky, he says, good morning. From his nest, the sleepy bird is stretching his wings. Waking to the world that he was born in. Prairie flowers are nodding in the sparkling dew. Mother Nature doesn't have to warn him. To cling to the earth that finds them And every day we'll find them waiting for the sun to say good morning Well, good morning is right Well, sure, I got a little story for you here oh, It's about two fellas that I knowed back in Tennessee years ago One was a ne'er-do-well sort of fella called Jim Bledsoe And the other was a hard-hearted old codger that run a general store and they called him Skin Flint Harris. <laughs> you know, Jim Bledsoe was not a lazy man, but he did shun work as long as he could, and he had a small family to support, too. And he wasn't a coward, but he just didn't like to fight. Sort of hurt his pride, he'd say. <laughs> One day his wife told him, says, I need a pound of coffee, some sugar, and a little molasses, and I just wanted if old Skin Flint Harrison would give us credit for it. And Jim said, no, he won't let me have nothing anymore till I pay him something on account. His wife told him she had nine dozen eggs that he could take down the store from sell for 90 cents, and maybe that would get the grub. Well, Jim, di <laughs> Jim didn't like the idea, but his wife put the basket on his arm and shooed him out the door anyhow. He went down to old Skin Flint's store and tried to sell him the eggs, but Skin Flint said he didn't want no eggs, but he would take them and give them credit on his bill. Jim said he needed the grub too bad for that. Well, Skin Flint says, I don't want your eggs, and I'll get out of the store. That made Jim mad, and he said, so you don't want the eggs, huh? Well, you're going to get them whether you want them or not, and I hope to hatch out something good for you, and in a split second, he hung the basket eggs and all right over Skin Flint's head. <laughs> and boy, was he a mess, and did the folks in that store laugh at him. And Jim Bledsoe runs. I'll tell you how he ran. Right down the street, right up to the sheriff, and he said to the sheriff what he'd done, and the sheriff nearly split his sides laughing. And he said, you know, I need a deputy on my force, and if you've got nerve enough to do that to old Skin Flint, I'll give you the job. And at that moment, they turned and saw Skin Flint coming running toward him on the run with the eggs all over him. And the sheriff said, raise your right hand quick, Jim. And he swore him in as a deputy before Skin Flint could reach him. Skin Flint run up to him, a cussing Jim, and started to hit him. And the sheriff said, I wouldn't do that if I was you, Skin Flint. Hitting the law is a mighty stiff offense. And he said, well, who's the law? And the sheriff said, Jim is. He's my deputy. And then he turned to Jim and he said, arrest Skin Flint Harrison there for using profane language on a public street and take him down to jail. <laughs> well, Jim took him to jail. And do you know from that day on, old Skin Flint Harrison was nice a merchant you'd ever want to do business with? And Jim's credit was good for anything he wanted to do. You know, that's one set of eggs that really hatched out some... One set of eggs that really hatched out some... One set of eggs that really hatched out some... <laughs> Let's have a song, Ozzy. What well, do you say? All right, Pappy. I don't know anything about any eggs, but I sure know something about a lazy man. Let's have it. Old huh? Tennessee Lazy. When the mountains are hazy, you could hear old Tennessee Lazy singing a mountain song, a tune from those Tennessee hills. And it's early in the morning 
He starts the day by stretching and yawning, singing a mountain song, a song from the Tennessee River. He takes his old fishing pole, goes on down to that old mill stream. Then lights his corn cob pie and puffs away a golden dream. Now people say the old boy's crazy, but that don't worry Tennessee lazy. For he makes them drink, drinks the dew from his Tennessee still. I want to thank you for that uh, grand tune that welcome, time. Welcome. Well, as the folks, you know we enjoy having you at our little get-togethers here in the old corral, and we'll be kind of looking forward to you coming and visiting us again real soon. The next time we get together for our old song fest. But right now, it's just about time for us to lock up the old corral for this visit. So we'll be looking for you. What, what do you say? Let's make it date. Meantime, the kids will have some more songs for you, and... I'll try and dig up another yarn or so for you. Hope you enjoyed your visit this time. So long, everybody. Ooh.